Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. And as always, I salute to those who decided to support me financially, be it through PayPal, Patreon or Super Thanks. Now I will start today's video with a situation in Kupiansk Front, which is located here. Some time ago, Russians have captured Masyutivka here. And since then, we're fighting in an attempt to expand their zone of control around the settlement. And uh, a lot of people are saying that it is sometimes hard to see a red paint on the red map. So today I will use black one. And if that is to your liking, please mention this in a comment section. So I will know and continue using a black paint. So as a result of fighting, Russians were able to capture this territory. As you can see, this is quite significant. Here you can see a strategically important city of Liman Pershi. It is heavily fortified settlement and Ukrainians were trying to capture it for some time. So it is also important for the Russians to expand their zone of control around this settlement as well. As you can see right in front of Liman Pershi, there is a forest and behind it village of Sinikivka, towards which Russians were also attacking for some time. As you can see, overall Russians are getting more and more control over the entire area east of Oska River. Now, it is possible that Russians could lodge an attack towards Dvorichna, but there are some reasons why it would be hard to do. And this is where the situation for the Russians is somewhat problematic. As you can see, they have captured territory here around Masyutivka, Liman Pershi, basically this forested area here and lowlands right in front of the river. But if we look at the elevation map, we can see that basically forest hides Russian positions here around Liman Pershi. But whatever positions Russians have in front of this river in the lowlands is under constant Ukrainian fire. Now, if we go and see here we can see that the city of Dvarichna is also located in the lowlands and Russians might attack towards Dvarichna because with that they can use these roads and attack uphill and expand their overall zone of control but attacking towards Dvarichna is dangerous because once again as you can see they will be subject to Ukrainian crossfire perhaps they will continue expanding their zone of control in this area in the general attempt to capture city of Kupiansk, which is located here. Now let's quickly visit a place where Ukrainians had infiltrated Russian territory and quickly talk about that. So it happened here, as many of you might know, right in front of city of Glotova right in front of city Graivaron. And as you know, Ukrainians have launched their attack here in this sector. Now, one of the reasons why they decided to choose this sector out of all is because this sector is located in a very particular situation. Here is the border. And from what I know is that Ukrainians have attacked from many positions and captured some of the villages all this operation took them about two days and one night there is a video of a russian warplane dropping bombs somewhere here in this sector Now, if you're particularly interested where this is happening, for example, here we can see a building that is easy to identify. So a white roof and 
two green ones to the sides. And with that, I'm sure I identified the exact location. And the exact location of that airstrike is here. So this is that building. The camera looks this way. And here you can see this building right here and this building and a bit of an opening, which is this right here. Now I quickly want to say that this attack did not achieve anything. It did not have any strategic or tactical value. It was basically uh, trolling in a way and a probing attack as well. Because now the Ukrainians realize that it is possible to poke through Russian border, they will continue doing so. Now, mind you that there were no contractors used in this operation. Mostly it was regular Russian army and some Spetsnaz. Now I'm sure these attacks will continue all along the border. This will be an attempt to force Russians to relocate some of their troops to protect the border itself and weaken their positions here across the entire front line. So this is a new opportunity opening for Ukrainian forces. Then we go to Bakhmut. Here situation is the same. Russians continued their attack from Klishivka in attempt to recover whatever positions they had, but still unable to capture territory in between this forest line and this field right here. Ivanivsky and Chasifyar is being heavily shelled by the Russians. Ukrainians also continue to harass Russian defensive lines here all around this front line. Here along the E-40 highway Ukrainians were able to capture about this much territory from the Russians. Again, Ukrainians will fight hard in this sector because they are very keen to defend E-40 highway and throw Russians back as far as possible as this road leads to a conglomerate of settlements and in the end would lead to Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. So very important sector here. Then I quickly want to touch on the situation in the city of Marinka. Ukrainians are reporting that Russians intensify their attacks on the flanks. And I have a video for you of a Russian tanks and artillery bombarding Ukrainian positions here within the city. So as you can see, Marinka is nearly destroyed. Buildings are damaged to a point where they can't provide any cover for infantry. So this is what's going on here in Marinka, basically a positional style warfare with Russians and Ukrainians exchanging artillery fire. While we are speaking on the subject of artillery, again, Ukrainians have intensified their strikes here in Zaporozhye region. A lot of experts are saying that this is in preparation of a counter-offensive and that offensive might start at the end of May. Now, back to the situation with Russian border, I'm sure Ukrainians will continue to probe attacks all across the border in attempt to provoke Russians to redeploy and develop some of their troops here to defend border of a so-called old Russian Federation. They might also launch some secondary attacks. 
it could be in Bakhmut, it could be in Seversk, it could be in overall Crimea front, maybe even Avdiivka. But I'm sure their main vector of attack will happen here in Zaporozhye. One of the reasons why is because this is where Crimea and Russia has a land bridge and also where a complex road system is. So as you can see like veins roads spread all across Zaporizhia so it is important logistical hub for Russian troops not only within Zaporozhia region but also Kherson and Crimea itself. With this I end today's video. If you enjoyed it please consider supporting it with a like, comment and a subscription. Also ring that notification bell if you want to see my video as soon as I post it. Join my Patreon. As always humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember Russia will be free and great.